The next time you're on Interstate 84, passing through the tunnel under Main Street in Hartford, Connecticut, spare a thought for Reverend Dr. Horace Bushnell. The famous 19th century congregational minister's name is associated with a lot of things in the city of Hartford, including Bushnell Park and the Bushnell Memorial Theater. But when you pass under the tunnel in the eastbound lanes, you are passing under what was approximately the location of Reverend Bushnell's church, the long-vanished North Congregational Church. Hi, this is History with me, Dan, and in this video, I'm going to talk about some of what used to exist over a hundred years ago along the east side of Main Street in Hartford, north and south of the intersection with Morgan Street in the decades before the highway came through this area. By 1912, there were three buildings between Talcott Street and Morgan Street. Two of them were demolished in the 1920s, and the one in the middle, the seven-story Pilgard building, was demolished in 1965. North of Morgan Street is where the highway was cut through in the early 1960s. This is where Bushnell's Church, which later served as an auditorium and a furniture store, once stood before it was destroyed in a fire. This is an aerial photograph highlighting the G. Fox and Company department store from above. South of Talcott Street and connected to the main department store by a bridge above the street is a structure built by G. Fox as a service building in 1918 and expanded in 1930. In front of this, along Main Street, there's a parking lot today. But back in the 1930s, there was a seven-story building, and before 1920, there were two other old buildings here, between Talcott and Morgan Streets. The first of these, at the northeast corner of Maine and Talcott, was the First Baptist Church, dedicated on April 23, 1856. The image on the right taken from the church's centennial memorial history of 1890 is inaccurate, or perhaps I should say aspirational, because it shows a spire that was never actually built. This was not an uncommon practice at the time to build a church in stages as funding became available. For instance, St. Peter's Catholic Church on Main Street was built in 1868 but the church's spire was not erected until the 1920s. Getting back to the First Baptist Church, it was designed by a Philadelphia architect, W. Russell West, in the Romanesque Revival style. It was the congregation's third edifice following the original 1798 church on Market Street and the 1831 building on Main Street that later became home to Congregation Beth Israel. That building was torn down to make way for the Cheney or Richardson building. The church's third building, at the corner of Main and Talcott Streets, was located on a cramped corner lot that did not allow for any expansion. Meanwhile, there was another Baptist church, South Baptist, at the corner of Main and Linden Place. In 1923, the two churches merged, and in 1926, they replaced the old South Baptist Church with the new Central Baptist Church. The following year, G. Fox demolished the old First Baptist Church and replaced it with a one-story block of stores, which has since been demolished. Just north of the church was the seven-story Pilgard building, that I mentioned earlier, and north of that was a four-story building at the corner of Main and Morgan Streets. In the early 20th century, this building was owned by Abraham Cadden, who for many years had a clothing store on Asylum Street. In 1920, 
the city of Hartford undertook a widening of Morgan Street, in large part to provide better access to the Bulkley Bridge. This meant that the properties along the south side of Morgan would be cut back or demolished, including the Cadden Building on the corner. It was acquired by the city and demolished in 1920. The city awarded Cadden's heirs, the owners of the property, $200,000. Considering this to be inadequate and unjust compensation, the owners appealed the amount, and litigation went on for at least a year and a half. I'm not actually sure if they were ever awarded an additional sum. This is a view down Morgan Street from Main Street with the Cadden Building on the right before the widening. And this is a view after the widening with the Cadden Building gone. The building to the south, which was now at the corner of the widened Morgan Street, had to be slightly cut back. The newly exposed wall, once covered by the Cadden Building, was rebuilt with white stone trim and classical decorative molding. As I mentioned, this structure was called the Pilgard Building. It was named for John A. Pilgard, grocer, banker, and civic leader, born in Skodsbold, Denmark, in 1866. He came to America when he was 19, joining his sister Katrina in Westport. He soon went to work for a Hartford butcher for five years before starting his own store, first with a partner and then on his own with a shop on Front Street. By 1900, he'd moved his business, now called the Union Grocery, to three adjacent buildings on Main Street that stood between the Baptist Church and the Cadden Building. In 1911, he replaced them with the seven-story Pilgard building. On the ground floor was his expanded market, which he advertised as the big white store because of the building's white stone trim. Pilgard had a passion for breeding and driving his own horses in harness racing. The photograph on the right, taken in 1934, shows Pilgard at Sage Park in Windsor, Connecticut, driving a sulky pulled by his horse, Hartford Louise. Among his half-dozen horses in training at that time were three named for his children, Hartford Peter, a five-year-old pacer, Hartford Bertha, a three-year-old trotter, and Hartford Louise, a two-year-old trotter. The following year, 1935, Pilgard was elected mayor of Hartford, but he had fallen ill after his nomination, and he died at St. Francis Hospital ten days after his election and before his swearing-in. After his death, Pilgard's grocery business was sold to the Mohican Company, a grocery chain that operated the Mohican market here from 1936 until 1949, when it moved to the corner of Maine and Mulberry Streets, next to Lowe's Poli Theater. As for the Pilgard building, it had a variety of tenants over the years, including the Veterans Administration, but was vacant after the VA moved out in 1959. When the building was torn down in 1965, there were plans to replace it with a 10-story, mid-century modern motel worthy of the Jetsons, but this was never built. The Pilgard building was still standing when this section of the 1965 Aerial Survey of Connecticut was taken. By that time, the highway had reduced Morgan Street to a sliver and had plowed through the area just to the north that had been the northeast corner of Morgan and Main Streets. As I said at the very start of this video, this had once been the location of Horace Bushnell's North Congregational Church, as shown in this section of the 1869 Atlas of Hartford and Tolland Counties. Reverend Dr. Bushnell's house had once stood a distance to the north, along what's now Winthrop Street. Hartford's North Congregational Church was built in 1824. It was the city's third congregational church, 
following the first church, known as Center Church, and the second church, known as South Church, both of which were established in the 17th century, and both of which, unlike North Church, still worship today in meeting houses erected in the early 19th century. The very first sermon in the new North Church was preached by Rev. Lyman Beecher, father of the author Harriet Beecher Stowe. But the church is most associated with Rev. Bushnell, an influential minister and prolific author of religious books, who served as pastor from 1833 until 1859, when he resigned due to poor health. When the congregation decided to move to a new location in 1866, it followed its former pastor's advice and built its new church on Asylum Street, across from the park that bears his name. Called the Park Church, it followed the same pattern as the First Baptist Church in planning for but never completing its spire. The congregation remained there until 1914, when it merged with the Farmington Avenue Congregational Church to form Emmanuel Congregational Church, located across from the Mark Twain House. The former North Congregational Church would go through dramatic changes over the years. In 1866, it was sold to the businessmen William Tuey and Solomon Cohn, who removed the steeple and converted the ground floor of the building into stores. Soon Tui took on full ownership and turned the upper level into a music hall, with space for a new stage provided through an addition to the rear. For the next two decades, Music Hall was a popular venue for musical performances, dances, masquerades, weddings, dramatic shows, sporting events like boxing, wrestling and roller polo matches, and appearances by public speakers. Music Hall was then acquired by the Turn Halle Company, a German-American gymnastics organization which added a gymnasium, or Turner Bund Hall, at the rear and extensively renovated the building. Music Hall reopened in 1889 as Germania Hall and continued to be a popular performance venue for many years. Tragedy struck on the night of March 7, 1898, when the hall was occupied for the masquerade of the Hartford Manor Corps, a German-American social club. A fire broke out behind the stage curtain, and terrified people rushed to escape the burning building, which was gutted by fire. Dozens were burned, and one woman sustained fatal injuries. The hall was soon repaired and continued as an entertainment venue, eventually showing early motion pictures. As for the businesses that occupied the lower level of the Germania Hall building over the years, one of the most notable was the saloon operated by German immigrant Henry Jansen for almost 34 years, beginning in 1884. Eventually, businesses took over the entire building and the hall closed. One business that moved into the Germania Hall building in 1907 was Lewis Harrop's Furniture Store. Over the years, Harrop's grew to take over the entire building. After Lewis Harrop died in 1924, the business was incorporated and led by his widow became one of the largest furniture stores in New England. For years, though, the building had continued to be regarded as a fire trap. In the early morning hours of February 6, 1932, a fire started that was fed by oil from a large storage tank. It likely burned for more than an hour undetected before a deafening explosion blew out the windows, followed by a second explosion a moment later. Firefighters arrived and had been at work for several hours when a third explosion blew out part of the front of the building, sending hundreds of bricks crashing to the sidewalk. The building that had once been Horace Bushnell's church was destroyed, and the site became a parking lot, eventually replaced by the highway. Just north of the destroyed Harrop's building was the building at 22-32 Village Street 
This had once had a Main Street address when it had been the site of the Old North Church's parish house. The parish house was replaced in 1904 by a four-story building built of yellow brick and Ohio limestone. Designed by architect George Zunner, it was erected for Silver Brothers candy manufacturers and had sheds and shipping rooms that extended to the rear. The brothers Jacob, Wolf, Israel, and Joseph Silver were Jewish immigrants from Russia. Israel Silver soon retired from the business. In the late 1920s, he joined thousands of other Jews who were immigrating to Palestine at the time. With the end of Prohibition in 1933, the Silver Brothers joined with other partners in a new business called the Eastern Bonded Winery. It occupied the section of their building at 32 Village Street, where wines, whiskies, and other liquors were blended and rectified. Their liquor license was granted by the Zoning Board of Appeals over the objection of the City Missionary Society, which viewed it, quote, as the entering wedge of the liquor traffic on Village Street, unquote. In 1936, the building was remodeled and given a new front on the ground floor to designs by architect Adolf Feinberg. This was to accommodate some changes of business locations. Silver Brothers, who owned the building, moved their wholesale confectionery business from 22 to 32 Village Street, one side of the building to the other, replacing the Eastern Bonded Winery, which was seeking a new location closer to the railroad tracks. At the same time, Max Feinberg Furniture, previously located next to the Barnard Brown School, took over 22 Village Street. Some time between then, 1936, and when the highway arrived, the Silver Brothers building was eventually demolished. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button, and if you want more content like this, subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell. Thanks for watching.